just been selected to hear me rant. I am not planning on editing this video clip, and I'm going to completely make it up as it goes. I should probably start out by saying I haven't ranted in a really long time. The last time I ranted, I said all sorts of obscene things because I was really little. But today, I am putting an end to it, and I am going to proclaim the truth right now. Okay, so what got me started on this rant? Last night, I watched this documentary called Lord Save Us From Your Followers. Alright? Great documentary. Completely, I agree with everything in it. Um, it's from a more progressive Christianity side of things. It's from a more, what people would consider a left side of Christianity. Now, I myself am from the right side of Christianity. Not the right, but I'm like proclaiming that I'm no more than anybody else, of course. But the right wing side of Christianity. That's how I grew up. That's what most people would base my beliefs on. But most people don't realize I have a lot of left ideas. Anywho, what I want to get to at is, well, there's this huge clash in America. Because you got these conservative fundamentalists on one side, and they're all like, you stupid liberals, you can't be away from doctrine, we need doctrine! And they're, 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 they're anti-gay, and they're, and they're anti-this, and they're, anti and, they're, and they're fundamentalists, and they say the Bible says this, and we need to do this. And the reason our society is so screwed up is because we're getting away from biblical doctrine. And then the other side is just like, whoa, 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 dude, 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 forget about biblical doctrine. The reason our society is so messed up is because Christianity is so hypocritical. You guys say one thing and you do another. How can you expect us to, how can you expect us to follow biblical doctrine if you're hating on gay people and people that don't agree with you? You're a bunch of haters. You guys hate so much. You need to love. Jesus was love. Jesus loved people. He didn't care about their doctrinal beliefs. And they'll come back over and they'll say, We do love people. We just want the doctrine back in, the, in our churches. And they're just like, We don't need doctrine. We need consistency. And I'm over here like, Oh my goodness. Because both sides are missing completely what Jesus was getting at. What was happening in Jesus' time, what Jesus came here to free us of, and what Jesus came to tell us was that the religious leaders of the time were not following the Torah. They were not following God's law to the extent that God wanted them to. They missed the whole point of the Torah. And thus, they were being hypocritical of the Torah. What, they, what he was trying to tell other people is, people who were lukewarm in their Christianity, you're either with me or you're not, dude. He, he, did, not, he did not just rebuke Pharisees and tell them, okay, you're doctrinally way off. You need to, you need to be, you need to soften your heart. That's not all he did. He went up to, he, he won the hearts of Jews and changed their hearts. Now, I want to go to Ezekiel 36. The Bible says that God will write the law on our hearts. And the Bible says that we are giving, we're giving a new heart and God puts his spirit within us. When we become Christians, we have an automatic desire to love people. We love people and we want to see. Now, some people are saying, Oh, okay, so those people that, like, preach doctrine, they, they just hate, they just hate. Well, let me ask you a question. Will a doctor who loves his patients tell his patients what's wrong with them? Or will he just say, oh, you're fine, you'll be okay. If a doctor who loves his patient, the patient comes in, they run tests, they find out the, can the patient has cancer. Is the doctor just going to be like, oh, no, you'll be fine, and then just let him go down? <laughs> I don't think so, but if they come in and the, the patient has cancer, the doctor's also gonna be like, oh, you have cancer, what? Did you smoke, a, do, do you know how bad smoking is for you? Holy crap, you should have exercised more, you should have, why would you do that? Why would you give yourself cancer? They're not gonna, do, not, they're still not gonna do that either, they're a loving doctor. Loving doctors will say, look, I love you, I found out you have cancer, we're gonna work, we're gonna work through this, we're gonna help you get through this, we're gonna do this. Now, the, th the problem is, we, we have one side of Christianity over here, being the doctor that's like, oh, you idiot, you didn't exercise enough, you didn't smoke, you didn't eat the right food, you ate too much carcinogens, you didn't. and then you have the other side over here that's just like, um, well, you've, well, I'm, I'm seeing these tests, and I, I think there might be something wrong with you, but, um, I don't want to tell you if it's going to hurt your feelings. So we got one side that's completely devoted to what they see as the absolute truth. And they're like, this is, my, this is the truth and I'm going to defend it because this is my job to defend the truth. And then you have the side over here that's like, well, I don't, really, I don't really know if there is. I don't really know if there is a truth, you know. Um, I think truth is subjective. For, okay. Let me make some things clear. Jesus said there is an absolute truth. In fact, Jesus said, I am the absolute truth. 
That's all I'm gonna. If you wanna, if you wanna see more videos on the absolute truth, I can go more into the absolute truth. But this is just my rant. Anyway, and then Jesus. But then the Pharisees who thought that they knew doctrine, they thought they had the absolute truth. Jesus said, "You don't have the absolute truth, dude. If all you care about is doing what's right." In the eyes of the people, you will completely have missed it doctrinally. You will completely missed it doctrinally. And he says to them, You hypocrites! You strain at a gnat, yet you swallow a camel. I mean, seriously, these people were so focused on keeping the law and getting their doctrine right, they didn't they didn't care about they didn't care about anything. That's crap. I'm gonna Anyway, so you got the liberals over here, the liberal Christians, the progressive Christians, which I love progressive Christians. Then you got the fundamentalists over here. Like over here you got Paul Washer, John MacArthur, John Piper, um, people like that, you know, people, uh, who else? Who, who's very, there's a lot of them through the ages, it's been Charles Spurgeon, Jonathan Edwards, and a lot of these names for people are, for people on the left are like, oh my goodness, these people were terrible people. But people on the right are saying, yeah, these are my heroes. You know, these are great people. Woo! Doctrine! Yeah! So, so we got, so we got that side of people. Over here, we got people like, and I don't know the history of left, I'm not going to lie, because I come from a right background. I'm not going to claim to know who were the great liberal thinkers in the past. But I know now we've got Shane Claiborne, Tony Campolo, and Jim Wallace, um, people like that. I think that's about as many as I mentioned for the conservative side. Anyway, who were like, hey guys, let's let's focus let's focus on the poor, and I, now those those two sides were the true were are both true aspects of Christianity. If you go way further right, um, you'd start to get into more people that aren't very famous. Uh, the right the right people the people on the right that um are, preach all doctrine and no you know no spirituality those type of people aren't very famous. They're the kind of people that you have in your life, though, um, church, pastors at a small church, uh, your your parents' friends, your friends' parents, uh, just older people in your community that are all doctrine and they they don't you know they don't care about anything. And then you got and then you got people way over here on the left that are all concerned about um, that have no respect for the truth at all, like Rob Bell, like um, Joel Osteen. Um, I'm not gonna say a lot of others because I don't want to get people that angry right now. But you got people, you got people on both sides. Now, the thing I find the most interesting is this: this side and this side are both anti. Drum roll. The Torah and Jews, even though Jesus was a Jew. I'm confused. I am very confused because Jesus said. That he did not come to abolish the law of the prophets. I come not to abolish, but to fulfill. And this is the third point I want to get over. It's because this, this group has a massively good point, and this group has a massively good point, but you know what they're missing? I'm st it's, it's right here. It's the Torah of our God. Okay? This is going to get a lot of people mad at me. I'm sorry. This is just the way it goes. Here it is. This group of people, when you say... Hey, yeah, I know. Keep the Torah. I eat the kosher. I... They get mad at you and they <laughs> Jesus came to do away with the law. He set us free from the law. We don't, we don't, you know, we don't have to keep those. But even though more people on the right are more are more in favor of Torah, but when you get really far right, people get very angry at people who keep Torah, like me, because the true because the truly converted people that care about doctrine will have the law written on their hearts and they'll say yes, more law. Show me more of God. I want to be, I want to have more of God. I want, I, if God said it, let that come into my heart. Now, I'm not saying that everybody, um, no, I'm not saying that everybody that's converted follows Torah. A lot of people still struggle with it and wonder about it. And, you know, they're honestly looking from scripture to see whether or not we should still follow Torah. And there's a lot of Christians out there who don't follow Torah who are truly converted just because um, the rest of the church is saying that we don't have to follow Torah anymore. And so, so there's this massive loss. And I want to, <laughs> I just want to clarify, I'm not telling everybody who's watching, you need to follow Torah, and if you're not following Torah, you're far from the kingdom of heaven. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. I want to suggest to you 
look into keeping the Torah. I'm not going to tell you you have to keep the Torah, even though a lot of Torah observant Christians would. I'm going to tell you, look in, read the Torah with an open heart, thinking about how it's relevant to us today. I want to tell you that the Torah is God's plan for our society. That, and that's, that's, the, that's what I'll get to at the end of this video. But then you have the people on the left that you're just like, Hey guys, I, I keep the Torah, yeah. And they're just like, the Torah? You, you're, one of those, you're one of those conservative fundamentalists, aren't you? You, you, want, you want us to keep the law more? No, we don't want to keep the law. We don't want to keep the law. We, we want, because Jesus, Jesus, didn't, Jesus didn't care about the law. He told us that we're saved by grace and grace alone. And that's all we have is we have our faith. Well, we don't really know what we have faith in, because there's not an absolute truth, you know. We wouldn't want to put that there's an absolute truth that everyone has to follow and have that. But if there was, it wouldn't <laughs> be involved keeping those old stupid Jewish laws. And I'm over here like, oh my goodness gracious. See, the Torah was God's plan for society. God never implant, God never planned for them to be living in living their lives as they were when Jesus, before Jesus came. And he never impl planned for us to be living lives with the, um, liberally like we are now. He planned, God gave us the Torah to show the church how they were to have their society. And now people are always, some people are always, like, oh yeah, but the Torah's got those stupid laws about stoning people, and these really, really weird laws about doing this, and, Doing that, and, you know, dude. Okay, the Torah says if your children disobey, you have to stone them. Come on, we can't, we can't be following the Torah now. All right, I'm gonna clarify something real quick. The Torah does talk about killing people, literally stoning people, putting them to death, if they if they break the law. Now let me explain why. Before Jesus came and died for our sins, people didn't have a re people couldn't have a regenerated heart unless unless God brought them to them, and He really like David or one of the prophets, and God really poured, you know, but in any, but even so, even as the way that was, if somebody poured out their heart to God, God would pour their heart into them. But they had to have the temple, and they had to have sacrifice. Now, when people were increasingly rebellious, now, remember that the, the, the people knew the laws. It was not that hard to know the laws, and, you know, if you sinned ignorant, you didn't, you know, 